So now we have a piece of code that we're gonna look at here. And what we're doing in this series of videos is we're looking at questions that could be asked in a, in a job interview to be a Go developer, Go programmer, Go software engineer. And I put together an entire bank of questions which you could go through to prepare for a job interview. And also which if you are an organization or a company or working at one, <laughs> if you're working at an organization or a company, you can use semantics, right? Those little differences. You can use this code base of all of the questions uh, to answer, to ask questions of applicants in interviews. There's a bunch of questions in here with a lot of notes. Uh, so, and some code samples and some little short problems people could work on and some interesting problems which could really give a lot of insight into one's knowledge and depth in the Go programming language. But here, if you go to the repo, uh, learn to code Go version three and my GitHub user account goes to 11. And this is the repo for my course on learn to code Google's Go programming language, which you could click that link to get to it or at udemy.com, right? You could go to Todd McLeod and learn Go right there. But all of the questions are located in this repo in 000, uh, right here, BM interview questions. So this is all the code that we're gonna be working with. And anything uh, with a number greater than 00 is code in the course. Anything with 000, 000 is um, <laughs> code that I'm just working on in development. All right, you can find a link to the playlist in the description down below. Also, I'll include a link to the course outline uh, for that entire course, which has links to all the code samples. Good stuff to help you learn Go. And uh, here we have this interesting code. And so when we run this code, whether or not we run it with an array or whether or not we run it with a slice, we get all of this and then we range over it. And as we're ranging, we're changing the index position. And I don't have a total clear answer for this. I'm gonna give you my best answer. And then if you have a different perspective, please contribute to the conversation so that we could all collectively come to a better perspective on what's going on here. And, uh, and you could contribute to the conversation in the comments down below and include a link to any code you include, uh, include a link to the Go Playground uh, to that code. But as we loop through this, let me just show it to you in action. We saw it in the previous video. I'm gonna click run here. And so we have this slice, right? Which has a length and cap of five. And then we're storing these values in it. And then we're ranging over sports. And as we range over it for each iteration, the first thing we're doing is we're changing that slice, the value stored at index position zero, one, two, three, four. We're changing it to biking every time. <laughs> and then we're printing out the value. And when we print these values out, what prints out is ski, surf, swim, sail, sumo, wrestling. Uh, it's an interesting combination, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, and as you print those out, you print those out, even though simultaneously before you printed out the value, right, it got changed at that location and uh, the value got changed, the value stored at that location in the slice got, got changed. It prints out these values here, and then when you print out sports afterwards, it just prints out biking, 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 <laughs> because every index position was changed to biking. And so when I've talked to another friend who's incredibly knowledgeable about the Go programming language, he's like, yeah, this is a common advanced error that people run into. And, uh, and even people who are at the highest levels in helping build the language have run into this error. But it, and he talked about it in relation to, my friend did, in relation to value semantics and pointer semantics. And he said that here is value semantics, right? Not just because we call that V and it's the value, but because every time we're just passing by value, you know, a value to V here and it's value semantics and we're printing that out, that's how he talked about it. And then this is, he talked about that as pointer semantics, right? So when we're accessing something by index position, uh, it's uh, pointer semantics. And I could make a case for that when we're using a slice, but this code will also run when we are using an array. And then that's like, where's the address? <laughs> where's the address in that, right? And, uh, and it, so, you know, calling it pointer semantics doesn't seem 100% on point or accurate to me though I kind of get where my friend's coming from also. So, uh, but the thing that's interesting here in the way, and I haven't looked into the internals, so if somebody knows where the internals are on this and wants to explain it, put a link in the comments down below. But the internals on this is like, here we're kind of giving all of the value to this range loop, which is its own code block. When the range starts, all the values of sports are kind of like given, almost as if this is its own new variable. 
uh, but it's not because the scope of it would then be here, but all the values are there. So when we iterate over them, right, we're getting those values, even if we change things uh, before we print those values out, it's almost like, you know, all those values are preloaded and ready to be ranged over. That's my current best understanding. But that's just a little interesting uh, piece of code, which I don't have a total perfect explanation for. Uh, and if you have anything to contribute to that, I'd love to hear it, as I'm sure everybody else would. So put it in the comments down below. And, uh, and that said, this is a really good thing to know about because you could put this code together uh, also in this way. And, uh, and so I'm just looking for the code. And this is here under pointer value semantics for range is where this code is located, pointer value semantics for range. And so here I'm just doing the value, here I'm just doing the index, right? And then here I'm doing the one that we already saw. And uh, so it's interesting to look at. It's interesting to look at, and I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts on it. All right, so that's uh, this video where we're learning about the Go programming language. And the challenge in this one is explain what this code will print. That was the question. I don't know if I did that at the beginning. And what this code is going to print is it's going to print ski, surf, swim, sail, sumo, wrestling, and then it's going to print biking five times. <laughs> and so that's what that code prints. And that's a really super interesting question to ask in a job interview to see if people could just look at that and discern. Because if I looked at this and I hadn't sort of had already been exposed to it, I would have said it's just going to print biking five times and then print biking five more times. <laughs> but in actuality, what's going on here is a little bit more nuanced. All right, that's this video. Uh, please comment down below so that we can have a conversation about this. See you in the next video. I think I found the solution. So I uh, did a little digging into the language specification. And, uh, but of course, you know, provide me with your comments and your thoughts down in the comments down below. But this is what I came up with. And, uh, and that solution is right here, just to preview that for you. Ba-doom, ba-ding, right there. <laughs> in bright yellow, I highlighted it. And the expression on the right in the range clause is called the range expression. And the range expression X is evaluated once, so my intuition was correct, once before beginning the loop, with one exception. So there's an exception, you could read about it there. But uh, it's evaluated once, so it's evaluated and then it runs on that, so that's where it's getting its V from. So that's kind of like being its own variable, but it's not. So when you come down here, the scope of M, right? It's just the same M, but this M right here got evaluated. That's being stored somewhere in the runtime, in the background. And, uh, and then, you know, when you access M here and change stuff, it's still accessing what it's stored somewhere else after that was evaluated once. And it happens this way too, when you loop over maps. So not only slices and arrays, but also over maps. So uh, that's what I came up with. And it's interesting to see this happen also for a map. So here we have a map and with all those elements and we range over it, it's gonna print out the key, which is the number and the value, which are the words. And then when I print the whole map, even though I've changed this before we printed anything out, uh, what prints out here is that everything has changed. So just to see that in action, bada boom, that's not it. I need this one, go run main.go. And, uh, and so there that is in action. But that is the solution, my friends, that I came up with. I've been coding now for, uh, you know, just about six hours, six hours and four minutes. That seems to be my limit. Because <laughs> I start getting around the five hour and 30 minutes phase, I just want to go exercise and I'm feeling a little bit brain dead, but I wanted to get through this before I took off. I got a couple more videos to record for uh, this Go class here. Uh, and then that's it, I'm calling it a day. I'll edit these and get them out. All right. Have a great afternoon, great morning, great evening, great day, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are, I hope it's a good one. <laughs> See you later.